poetry truly is a work of art. It's the language of the soul. It's unspoken feelings, bent or spilled on a parchment of paper. Verses of a Risen Phoenix is one such book. It's a book of the collection of moments and memories and experiences that I've gone through and a lot of women like me have gone through and also some men too. It's a very insightful reference book to go back to. It gives you a different perspective on things every time you read read the poem. So in a happy mood it make me it may make you feel totally energized and in a sad moment it might remind you that retrospection and introspection is necessary for life. I have had a lot of my readers write back to me that they have enjoyed the poems and I will share their reviews soon. But they've also requested that I read the preface. So I'm going to take that liberty of doing so for my readers and sending out love and light to each and every person so that you can understand women better and women can understand themselves better. Preface. Verses of a Risen Phoenix is a collection of moments, memories, and conversations. Of moments, memories, and conversations across many years covering struggles and victories which we have all had our fair share of. Everyone has loved and lost. We have all laughed and we all cry when it hurts. The gentle and the formidable echoes were dying for a parchment of paper on which they could be spilled. As the quill penned these words, and I'm delighted to share it with you all. You may wonder why the phoenix. Well, the phoenix is an inspiring mythological creature, immortal and symbolic to the sun, which sets only to rise with brilliance again. It surrenders to its overwhelming darkness from within to burst into flames of purification, then rise from its ashes anew, a physical catharsis of change. It can be construed as a symbolism of the many lives the soul, discarding the tattered physical form to be born fresh in a new realm, representing the continuity of the immortal journey of the soul. It is such a fascinating creature, overcoming all the things we believe can destroy us. The phoenix's life resonates with the human cycle to return to ashes, void of moisture, arid, and scattered eventually. Many consider the phoenix to be feminine, as its tears are medicinal and repairing even to the most severe of wounds, be it in terms of physical, emotional, or spiritual, the connotation here focuses more on its repair and restoration abilities. Women, like the phoenix, are givers of life with the potential to rise from their own ashes when they embrace who they really are on the path of self-realization or through motherhood. The phoenix is a majestic, gentle being, quite like women, fierce only when protecting its loved ones 
or fighting off dark energy. Known for its loyalty and allegiance, the only two things that can kill a phoenix is dark magic or if its ashes during rebirth are destroyed before it is allowed to be born. And women wither when looked upon as a taboo, a lesser entity, restricted or controlled in society. Like the phoenix, women too are fascinating and spiritual beings. Most attempts to describe femininity is no more than a feeble attempt for countless reasons. Since the beginning of the world, the trait of being a mystery has been stuck with femininity, often termed as unpredictable, complex, or collection of countless colors like a rainbow. Thus, evidently, women have been an inspiration for art, sculpture, prose, poetry, a mysterious puzzle that everyone wants to solve. But the unseen is an unsolved, unsolvable mystery. And being spiritual and internal beings, women hold more within themselves than the world will ever know, let alone see. Therefore, the surface alone can be scratched, but the depth is far from being known. This saying is also the reason why women as a gender have intimidated many and have aroused fear or awe from the other gender. For it is natural to fear what one does not comprehend. The tales of old and the odes of beauty depicting is so much easier to define and confine femininity in a mold. A safe harbor to look upon femininity as an object of art, a verse worthy of admiration, to account frailty or gentleness than to perceive femininity as a force of nature, uncontrolled and formidable. Thus, one can understand the past and the dark ages of feminine oppression, domestic violence, intellectually being challenged, stigmas and limited conditioning, and finally, the universally coined sentence, the fairer or the weaker sex. Fear was the cause of it, and all the things done in fear only build up resistance, screaming for justice, fairness, and equality. The suppressed echoes filled with pain and piling injustices led to the rise of the phoenix through purification and rebirth. To be born in a time where we are, or we may have, so to say, a voice. Have those who stand up for us and our rights and our dignity, equally supported by secure and strong men who are fathers, brothers, husbands and sons as much as like-minded women. The past has paid a great price for us to walk with our heads held high in the present. Feminine energy, like universal energy itself, is ever-present in all things, yet invisible. Quiet like the air we breathe, only finer and more subtle. Like Mother Nature, We are born free. We don't need to ask for freedom. It was given to us at birth. A dam made of concrete can hold water captive for a while, but it will eventually burst forth. For being controlled is not the nature of water. Control is the nature of humanity. Thus, the horrific things we do to each other and Mother Nature. 
Nature, like women, was created to give life, nurture, and preserve it. We emulate nature as women, weak as a sapling, but grow into strong, fruit-bearing trees with deeply entrenched roots, giving life balance. On one side, we are calm and shy in low tide, yet wild and passionate in high tide, gentle and loving, yet fierce warriors when fighting to protect and preserve. Crawling in humanity like a caterpillar, with the courage to endure the grueling pain of metamorphosis, to rise delicately as a butterfly, leaving behind the life of the past. Vessels of wisdom, deeply connected to nature. Femininity is both sides of the coin, contrasting yet whole. Gentle, vulnerable and delicate, yet wise, majestic and formid formidable. We have it within ourselves to be both, and we must embrace both to wholly understand our essence and purpose in life. The gift of limitlessness can indeed be intim intimidating, but this is the truth of all internal beings. Hence what you cannot see, you cannot measure, leaving women as an eternal mystery like the phoenix and mother nature herself. Years of conditioning have often led us to be defined by our frailty rather than our strengths, but inner wisdom always guides us to the truth and to be free to celebrate I, our diversity. Whenever in doubt, I urge you, remember your essence and you will see how every woman is connected to the other through nature's tree of wisdom. Her roots are strong and her soil is carried by the elements of nature all across the world to spread the energy of love and growth for all. You are never alone. I hope you enjoy these verses as much as I have enjoyed writing them. A collection of poems from my books, the Sand and Sea Trilogy, and many more. Moments that now live in memory and some conversations, both with myself and nature, along with a short sisterly message at the end of each poem. I send love and light to all, men and women, to all, to all of humanity, because Mother Nature is for all, and woman is the creator of mankind and woman her love is for all let's always stay connected with our love and let's never lose sight of our essence lots of love and the silver <laughs>